everyone. Since this pandemic started, I've been on the fence about how seriously I should take what we're hearing from the media. After all these years of documenting media corruption, I'm naturally skeptical. But this is serious business, and they wouldn't mislead the American people with their usual hackery in such a serious moment, right? Wrong. According to James O'Keefe of Project Veritas, his team obtained video showing nurses talking about having just helped CBS News to fake a long line of people requiring testing. Ugh, are you serious? But the governor says testing above all else will help determine when to fully reopen. Some people will think we should move faster. Some people will think we should move faster. That's the footage that CBS rolled, seemingly trying to bolster the Michigan governor's desire to keep the state locked down. It appears that there was no real lines of people needing to be tested, so they rounded up a bunch of medical workers and pretended to be actual patients coming in to be tested. In the Project Veritas clip, you can hear the cameraman straight up asking the nurses if they knew it was all fake and how they felt about that. They seemed annoyed, but oddly okay with being used as props for political propaganda. How did you guys feel on Monday, like, what, with the with the cars? I mean, it's just annoying because we could have done other stuff, you know? Right. But smile and nod. <laughs> we knew they were, they were coming. We had no clue that we were going to have to, like, now obviously I can't show you the whole thing. I recommend that you head over to Project Veritas YouTube channel when you're done here and watch the entire video. Sorry for the interruption and we'll get right back into this episode but first give me 30 seconds to tell you about this free offer for my subscribers. It's tough right now to get your hands on gold. Dealers just can't get enough but we know it's time to protect your wealth. Time to protect your family. Did you know that you can buy, sell, and spend physical gold with Swipe with Gold? It's super easy with our mobile app to buy real gold for better financial security. Just visit www.swipewithgold.com and download the app. Register and your prepaid debit MasterCard will be delivered by mail in just a few days for free. When you get your card, you just load on your cash. Then you're ready to buy, sell, and spend in real gold. It's that simple. You can withdraw your money anytime at any ATM that accepts MasterCard. So visit www.swipewithgold.com. That's www.swipewithgold.com and download the app right now to get your free card and start using real gold as money. But wow, it's right there, undeniable. CBS News faked COVID testing lines seemingly to bolster the Democrat governor's desire to keep Michigan locked down. It makes perfect sense that this corrupt coward of a governor who lies about protesters maligning and demonizing her own constituents would get this kind of help from the DNC state media. Funny how she's never asked to provide a single shred of evidence for this claim, which we all know is an utter lie. It's typical operating procedure for these people. Yes, I believe there was a Confederate flag flag at this rally, as well as a sign that used the swastika as a metaphor for what's going on in Michigan. It wasn't an endorsement of Nazism. The Michigan governor and the media know this, but they're purposely dishonest in order to smear this protest movement. You can find plenty of hammer and sickle flags at any Democrat party rally or protest, and yet you never see the media point them out and then tarnish the entire protest as communists. James O'Keefe said this about the footage on his website. Nick Ross, a corporate cleaning site supervisor at the chair Health facility said he was there when the CBS News crew arrived and set up the video shoot at the COVID 19 testing site in the parking lot. Apparently, the news crew wanted more people in the line because they knew it was scheduled. It's just annoying because we could have done other stuff, said one of the registered nurses there recorded with a hidden camera by a Project Veritas insider. CBS News responded to James O'Keefe saying, quote, CBS News did not stage anything at the Cherry Health facility. Any suggestion to the contrary is 100% false. These allegations are alarming. We reached out to Cherry Health to address them immediately. They informed us for the first time that one of their chief officers told at least one staffer to get in the testing line along with the real patients. Oh, come on. What would be the point of getting one staffer in that line? No one from CBS had any knowledge of this before tonight. They also said that their actions did not prevent any actual patients from being tested. We take the accuracy of our reporting very seriously and we're removing the Cherry Health portion from the piece. What good would that do? The piece already ran. In the video, the nurses don't mention anything about 
about testing real patients. They just all seem annoyed that their time was wasted when they could have been doing better things. The way they worded this denial is suspicious to me as well. In the part where they said it didn't prevent any real patients from being tested. Well, yeah, that could be a true statement if there was nobody there to be tested in the first place. You could take CBS News at their word, but after all their years of bias and deception, I'm inclined not to believe them. Seriously, if you want to check out long-term documentation of their deception, check out their section on newsbusters.org. I'll link it in the description. This isn't the only deceptive reporting to come out from CBS News recently. Just yesterday, their CCP asset, Weijia Zhang, promoted a story from a supposed whistleblower complaint that had already been debunked. So the supposed whistleblower complaint comes from a former HHH official, Rick Bright, and it's twofold. One, he claims he warned the Trump administration in January and was ignored, and two, that he was ousted for not pushing hydrochloroquine. Both claims are suspect without evidence and have largely been debunked. Today, ousted vaccine expert Rick Bright filed a formal whistleblower complaint alleging his warnings were ignored. Nora, Rick Bright's complaint lays out in detail just how devastating he predicted the coronavirus would be and how he tried to get his superiors to listen. Tonight, President Trump is not addressing the bombshell report, focusing instead on reopening the country. Rick Bright, who was ousted from his job leading the administration's efforts to find a vaccine, claims he warned the White House in January of the crisis that was coming but was ignored. Bright says he encountered resistance from HHS leadership, including Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, who appeared intent on downplaying this catastrophic threat. Time after time, I was pressured to ignore or dismiss expert and scientific recommendations and instead to award lucrative contracts based on political connection. In other words, I was pressured to let politics and cronyism drive decisions. Like I said, the so-called bombshell had already been laid to rest. From Politico, a left-leaning news source who reported, quote, Bright told the New York Times on Wednesday that he believed his removal was because of his internal opposition to pursuing investments in malaria drugs as potential treatments for COVID-19. Three people with knowledge of the HHS's recent acquisition of tens of millions of doses of those drugs said that Bright had supported those acquisitions and internal communications, with one official saying that Bright praised the move as a win for the health department as part of an email exchange that was first reported by Reuters last week, although Bright's message was not publicly reported. If Bright opposed hydrochloroquine, he certainly didn't make that clear from his email. Quite the opposite, said the official, who has seen copies of the email exchanges. So the first part of his complaint is clearly bogus, which definitely casts doubt on the rest of it. The second claim that he warned Trump officials in January, specifically the Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, who he describes appeared intent on downplaying this catastrophic threat. This is also inconsistent. CBS's own reporting on Alex Azar is that Azar had warned Trump in January and was ignored himself. So there's definitely some contradictions there. Bright also claimed Trump advisor Peter Navarro wasn't taking his Warning seriously in early February. But again, CBS is reporting Cass Navarro as also warning Trump in January. I know this is kind of hard to follow, but the point is CBS's own reporting contradicts with this guy's whistleblower complaint, and yet they went forward with this story. There's no facts at all in this story, only baseless claims and speculation. But we're used to that when it comes to reporting on Trump from the DNC media. That's all I have for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.